In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to install SAS. SAS is a CSS framework, which means it's just a better way of using CSS. Uh, the SAS has extra functionalities such as mixins and variables and things of that sort. So it's usually better to use SAS than actual CSS. So today I'm going to show you how to install SAS. It's a little weird because you have to use the command line a little bit, but I'll go through all the commands and you should be able to install SAS quite easily. So to get started, we're going to go to this link. I'll leave the link in the description called uh, rubyinstaller.org. And what you want to do is you want to download Ruby. And then you just simply choose one of these two, the newest versions. If you're running a 64-bit system, you could choose this one. If you're using a 32-bit uh, system, then you can use this one as a default. If you don't know which one you're using, then you can always resort to the 32-bit one. To check which um, bit you're using, you go to your control panel, and then you go to system and security, and then system, and then under system, there should be a section called system type, and this should show whether or not you're using a 32 or 64-bit operating system. For me, I'm using a 64-bit operating system. So I would click this one for my installation. Now simply run this and download the installer. So after downloading the installer, I moved the application to the desktop to make this tutorial a little easier, but you go to where you downloaded your installer and you simply run it. And I'll be using English for this tutorial and I accept the license and so forth. Um, keep these things as default and click install. This should install Ruby on your system. And then your download should be complete. And you click finish. So now that we have Ruby installed, now we're going to use the command line to install SAS. So simply I press the Windows key or the Windows button right here. And I type in CMD. And you should notice there's two options. There's the regular command prompt and there's the start command prompt with Ruby. You want to click the one with Ruby. Now you can change where you want to install SAS, but I'll keep it to where it is default, which is my user on this um, computer. So the next thing you want to type is gem install SAS. Simply one command line and it should install SAS. However, if this does not work, you could type in sudo gem install sas like this if the installation does not go through for administration issues but if if it does go through then you don't have to type in sudo in front of gem install sas since i'm not gonna since i already installed it i'm not gonna use this and then all your you have sas installed and to make sure i do have it installed i'm going to check what version i have and as you can see, I'm running 3.4.23, um, which is the newest version of SAS as of now. So that's all you have to do to install SAS. Now it's a little trickier on how to get SAS started. And that's what I'm gonna show you right now. Before I show you how to actually use SAS, I'm gonna show you my files. So in my exempt folder in the htdocs section, or if you're using WAMP, it would be within your WW folder. I created a new project called video, and this is where I'm gonna start using SAS instead of CSS. So I just gotta know the directory or the path to this file or this folder. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna open my folder, my file explorer, and then I'm gonna go to uh, where uh, XAMPP is, or if you're using WAMP, I'm, you, um, you go where WAMP is, and then I'm gonna go to htdocs, and video. So if you click here, when you go to the path where your project is, this is what you're going to be typing in. Um, Cause we want to change the directory so that we're looking at a directory that we're, that we're going to use SAS in. So if that seems a little complicated, uh, we'll get to it. So to get to that um, path, I'm going to go back to the root directory, the C drive. So I'm going to do this and do this. As you can see, now we're back to the C drive. So now we're going to change the directory so that we go to exempt, htdocs, and then I'm going to go to video. So now I am in this folder, the one I showed you right here. I am in this folder and I'm ready to use SAS. Okay. 
And again, you could change this if you're using WAMP. It would be WAMP slash www slash your project. And again, your path may be different from mine depending on where you downloaded or installed XAMPP or installed WAMP. So now we're in the directory of where I want to use SAS. Um, before we get started, we're going to create new two new folders in our project. So I'm going to go in my um, text editor and I'm going to create two new folders. I'm going to create a folder called SAS, obviously for SAS files, and I'm going to create a new folder called CSS. Again, you can name these files whatever you want or folders whatever you want. It does not matter. But I usually keep it as SAS and CSS since it's easier to read that way. Um, and this is where we're going to start using SAS. Okay, so to get started, we're going to open uh, or we're going to start running SAS by running this command. And simply it's SAS watch. And then we type in the two folders that we're going to use for the transferring of files. So the first one is going to be the SAS folder. And the next one is going to be the CSS folder. So basically, when you type in SAS and the different syntax that it is, plus its mixins and variables and so forth, that will be converted automatically into a CSS file and it will be pushed into the CSS folder. And all your organization will be the same in the SAS folder as the CSS folder. So if you run this, now it's going to be watching for any changes within these files and it should implement it across both. So if you look here, we have two SAS files, I mean one um, SAS folder, one CSS folder. And now we're going to start actually using SAS. I can show you the implementation and the syntax and why it's a little different. If you want more documentation on SAS, I'll, send, I'll give you a link in the description as well. So the, for this example, I'm going to create a SAS file simply by typing in SAS uh, for the file extension. So I'm going to call it index.sass. And as you see, there's a cache created and we're and there's an index.css file automatically created by me creating one file in the SAS folder. So now we could use this to implement SAS stuff. So for SAS, if you're using SAS, um, the syntax is a little different. So in the index.php I have a class called SAS box. So the difference in SAS files is that when you write CSS, it's you, you include brackets and semicolons, but in SAS files, you do not have to do that. So for this, I put in SAS box and I simply go to the next line instead of having a bracket like this. So I simply go to the next line and I can give this a width of, let's say 400 pixels, a height, of 500 pixels, a background color of red, and then, and then maybe a margin zero auto. Again, that's up to you. I mean, this is basically the same thing as CSS, but without the extra syntactical things. So now I'm going to link in the SAS, I mean, the SAS file by using the CSS index.css path. So I want to use the CSS folder instead of the SAS folder when linking in style sheets. So hopefully this should update my page. So I'm going to simply go to my local host slash video slash index.php and hopefully this is running well and it is. So it, it's running SAS but it's just being converted into CSS and being outputted as CSS. However, you could also use another file extension called scss, which I'll create right here. So I'm going to create a new file called index.scss, which is SAS CSS, but it, just a little bit. It's probably more. You're probably more used to this if you run if you're used to CSS already. And uh, basically, it's CSS all the syntax plus the SAS extra functionalities. So for instance, if, I, if I'm styling the SAS box, let's make this a little different because I don't remember the actual properties that I had before. Um, say this is 500 pixels, height 600 or 500 pixels, and then a background color of pink, and then a margin zero auto. So as you can see, it's it's basically CSS syntax, 
but you also have the benefits of using SAS, SAS's functionality. And again, if you want to know those functionalities more in detail, I'll leave a link in the description. But, but, we'll, but the only difference between the S CSS extension versus the SAS extension is that you keep all the typical syntax from CSS and S CSS. And the, but however, SAS makes it a little bit more simple by getting rid of the brackets and the semicolons. So it's a little easier to write in SAS. However, it could get, it could get more complicated if you have a lot of styling. So it's up to you which one you want to use. And to make sure this is working, I'm going to use this um, path instead of uh, the other one. Um, I'm actually going to rename this. I should not rename it index. I should call it index one. And now we're going to use index one.css. Hopefully that's what is being shown. Yeah, we are using index one.css. So that should be fine. So now we're going to save this and open up the page and refresh it. And there you go. We changed it to pink, made it a little wider and so forth. So again, the only difference is the syntax, but you have all the functionalities of SAS. So hopefully that was not as complicated as you thought it would be. Hopefully it's well, I explained it well. And uh, if you like this video in any way, or if it helped you in any way, then please leave a like down below. If you uh, have any critiques on how I can be better as a uh, tutorial guy, um, please leave a comment down below as well. And I'll see you in a future video. I also forgot to mention, I mean, you guys, I'm pretty sure you guys saw this, but just to be clear, uh, if you want to stop running SAS, all you have to do is hold Control C and it should bring up Terminate Batch Job. All you have to do is press Y and press Enter and it will terminate SAS. And thank you again for watching this video.